Sports Morning Scramble. Glad to have you here on a Tuesday morning as we're rolling along. It's a nice morning outside, 64 degrees downtown Stillwater. And the superintendent of schools, Dr. Mark Moore, is on. And I don't know if you heard it. I was playing a replayed version. Uh, uh, I want the early morning audience to hear it also. But uh, the mayor was just bragging about all the... Uh, the teachers and the schools, and this is an unprecedented time. We say that over and over, but it really is. And first of all, welcome to the show today. Yeah, good morning. Good, and, glad to be here. And I don't know if you heard him uh, praising the teachers, but uh, this is sort of we learn as we go type thing, not only for students, but teachers as well, and administrators. And uh, yesterday, I, I think he kind of turned a page, right? Yes. You know, uh, we started our, our distance learning plan yesterday with, with our students and we spend about two weeks uh, just pulling everyone together with multiple Google, Google Hangouts. We're all working <laughs> remotely. And, uh, but I, I tell you, I have, I echo his thoughts about our staff and our administrators. I have, I told him yesterday in, in a kind of a kickoff that we had through Google Zoom or through Zoom that uh, I've never been more proud to say I'm a Stillwater pioneer. Well, that's well said, and uh, I, I've heard that echoed not only here, but also uh, at different levels, whether it's a, at OSU. I know Jeremy will come in, and he's teaching a little differently. How has it changed for you as an administrator? Because have you had to, to uh, adopt some of these skills as well? Yeah, you know, we we have had a, a very, you know, strict stance on who can come in and out of the building. Um, some of that's been got us from the State Department, and some of it's just as we're assessing it, looking at what we can do remotely and what what we cannot, so I'm like like most of my administrators, like every one of my administrators, we are. I'm starting my third week of remote learning. Wow. And, and remote remote learning and remote working. I guess you would say. So are, are you are you going into the office on a daily basis, or are you going in at all? No, I'm. I mean, I've been in my office probably. Um, three times in the last two weeks. Um, so what has helped, I've, you set up your office at home. Now what helps us is we are a, uh, we have a really good technology department and strong infrastructure. So all of our platforms, other than just a few minor items, are, are have remote or on the cloud. So all of our emails, all of our documents, our Google hang- Hangouts, our reporting system for staff, all the multiple platforms we have are, are you can access remotely. So really, we have just picked up from day one working from from uh, from home. And you realize uh, there's certain things you that make it a little bit easier on site. But <laughs> yeah, it has been amazing how productive our staff has been able to be. Yeah, it, it's not quite the same as face to face though, is it? Because I've had people wonder how will this change the future. And it will some. I mean, I think I think it's going to kind of conflate a little bit in the fact that uh, we still need face-to-face stuff, but we're learning skills that, uh, and maybe it can expedite some procedures anyway. But uh, how do you think this is going to change future learnings if you had a crystal ball and could look a year down the road? You know, that's yeah, a good question, Steve. I uh, I, I do agree. There there's something to to being face-to-face and in-person, just having that three-dimensional experience and feeling the, the energy from someone else and also just seeing their, their hand motions or their facial motions that are a little bit different. So I do agree to that, that, that it, it has changed. Now, what we have found, I don't, for my first time remote working, is when we have a meeting or we have some type of uh, four of us on a Zoom is, Generally, we're mo- we're a lot more task oriented, yeah. um, which is is good in a way, but also uh, sometimes it's about relationship building too. Right. So you want that component. Um, I don't know. I think a good example is uh, one that I had this week. We were looking at as we finished up the two weeks. We had I meet with my cabinet members who are my direct reports uh, every um, every I mean three days three days a week, and we were looking at starting to had to plan something for next year. We were having some difficulty because we needed to pull some teachers out for substitutes, and we just had this default that we need to pull them together in person. And we kind of had a comment of, hey, why don't we do a modified? Why don't we do maybe pull them out some? And then also if we have some skills that they can be in right in their classroom right after school and do a Google Hangout. So I think in the past our default was always 
we've got to meet in person. And now I think we will probably look at, okay, what meetings can be done in person? What, what times are best maybe to have a Google Hangout and be a little bit more productive? So I think maybe my thought is as we're looking at meetings and com- communicating, there's going to be a lot more combination in the future, yeah. hopefully. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to go all Google Hangout or a Zoom meeting, but I think there's times that we can say, hey, let's, let's meet, meet cl- uh, virtually. You know, I had never heard the term Google Hangout until about two weeks ago. And uh, you obviously were familiar with it before, but explain that a little bit to us. You know, I well, I wish I had known before. I kind of I feel bad because I, you know, throughout my career, I've maintained uh, a lot of technological skills. But really, my first Google Hangout meeting was that Monday after spring break. And I looked at the end of that week and my calendar and we had uh i had participated in 24 uh google hangout meetings so that's direct meetings with my direct reports or meetings with the senior group you know google hangout is essentially if you're if you're familiar with zoom then it's google's version of zoom okay so uh on our system since we're all our calendaring is on uh google all of our emails what we do is um when we put it in a calendar evite or calendar marker, then if I'm meeting with, say, my assistant superintendent, Kathy Walker, then I will just send her an evite, and then I'll click a button that says Add Conference. And what we do is when we go on to that, um, that, that calendar um, marker, there will be a, a line that says Join in Google Hangouts, and you just click on it, and it takes you to the, essentially the room where you meet. So to speak. All right. When you said that, I, I pictured when I was in school. I think I've mentioned this before. I go back far enough where uh, smoking was allowed. Uh, I never yeah. was a smoker, <laughs> but we had an area outside that was the, what we call the old gym, and people would hang out there. The group that yeah. my folks like didn't want me to hang out with them, but that would be like a hangout type. So that's what, sort of what I was envisioning there. But it is a <laughs> Zoom type of thing then. Okay. It's a, it's a <clears throat> it's just a video conferencing, and I uh, haven't thought about it but it is hang out but actually we're hanging out working i guess i haven't had a lot of we're starting to see i think it's been interesting too steve is as gosh i'm probably on over 50 getting a google hangout meetings now so well, you're starting to get a you know, people are there's comfort are, zone then yeah they're feeling more comfortable with it and uh we're in the you know when to talk and when not to talk and and how to have that flow of conversation back and forth so starting to change most of mine um has been uh been work related but i can tell you um i have you know I, you and i have talked a little bit about uh where i grew up and where you grew up and right yeah. i'll talk to my sisters i have two sisters one who's passed and i have two two older sisters and both of them are in education and you know usually we will make phone calls regularly i'll, I'll take to one once a week but you know, we, we started saying, well, why don't we just have a video conference for 15, 10 minutes once a week? So we started doing that with my sister. I started That's awesome. participating in a video conferencing. So, And it's been nice just to see their faces when normally we would, would do, a, do a phone call. Yeah, we in my family, we haven't done the video stuff yet, but we're talking a lot more by, by via text and that type of stuff, just group text and stuff. But it's odd how that kind of brings you together. We have, have a big family, obviously. There are six siblings and i think we've all been in in group text at uh, one time every i don't know every two or three days something like that which is different you know so yeah it is and and like like everyone else uh you know i have nephews who have lost jobs or and they're trying to you know have some who you know even what's what's interesting too and and other health issues don't stop too where you have maybe an uncle or a an aunt going through a health yeah. issue unrelated to COVID-19. So there's still a lot of struggles that you're trying to work through that now make it even more difficult when they go into a medical facility. You know, uh, and Dr. Jeremy Cook is in the room also. Good morning, Jeremy. So education morning. everywhere. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, Mark, the uh, uh, the changes that you're making and some of it you're, you're very comfortable with. I think if you were in the convention business right now, obviously you feel for those people uh-huh. now because that's how they make their living normally. But they host these big events where you get people together, and uh, right. that can be expensive, lots of travel and time. Will right. it change what you do in the future with the 
uh, people in, in meetings because obviously this ability has been there before, but now we're kind of forced into it. You see that as a trend that could be uh, changing to some businesses? You know, I, that's a that's a good question too because we you know I go to we probably go to one conference a year and um, you know there's a couple of things that that you benefit from I you know there's still something Steve to seeing someone in person and being able to ask ask, ask the questions and there is and have that that interaction that you you get a better feel but I, I think there's things with that. Okay, hey, I just need the facts. I need the information. I need the skill set. Let me get it. Let me move on. Uh, definitely, you're you're going to start thinking: Can I get that in a, a cheaper or or faster way? Uh, I I think it's going to. I don't. I mean, to to what level and to what extent? I'm not sure, but uh, I think it is just like like we are looking locally how we can use Google Hangout or Zoom to accomplish some of our tasks that we wouldn't now. My weekly meeting with cabinet, my direct reports. I'm not. When we get back to normal, we're not going to go back to a Google Hangout. But uh, there are times where I can see where maybe one cabinet member is at a offsite, and they can stop and kind of be a part of the meeting through a Google Hangout while the rest of us are meeting, and that that way they don't have to kind of catch up later. So I could see I could see the flexibility and the interaction of this really benefiting us and how it, how much of Zoom and how much of in-person will be kind of time will tell, I guess. I think that works in every business, including this one, because obviously um, it's fun when you guys are able to come in, and I like the one-on-one. You get to know them in a different way, but it may alter uh-huh. the way. Even I do some things where, hey, we can do a quick hit more on the phone, and we've always had that ability, and, and radio's always used the phone. But I prefer, obviously, the one-on-one, but we can yeah. you, you can add a little bit to it and – and so it may even change the way we do things. And uh, I appreciate you calling in. Jeremy, I think you had a comment here. Well, I was just going to say that it, I think we're undergoing a, a radical shift in, in a lot of these things. And, and it's just un, unfortunate that it had to be under these circumstances. And, and you know, Mark and the, certainly those dealing with the public school systems, I mean, we just we have literally have no idea how much work is going on behind the scenes yeah. to try and make this happen. It's, you know, schools and to keep them productive and all the rest of it. And it's just amazing what they've been able to do so far. Yeah, which is kind of what uh, uh, Mayor Joyce was talking about before because he sees it with – he's got four kids at home. So he knows what the what the teachers are going through and everything. Mark, you said we, we had a lot of things to cover. What else do you want to get out there today? Yeah, you know, before we before we move, I, I really talk about this, this talk, topic of why it's going to change. Um, you know, I, we we have really been in just – manage mode and getting to our distance learning so we have spent so much time the last few days getting here but but we are starting to think about how this will will change and how uh distance learning will will be incorporated into to our regular offerings and now that i think we're still you know, not sure at this point but i do know uh, a lot of times we will have individuals who maybe cannot come into the classroom because of, of health issues or Maybe they are homebound for a reason, or maybe we have some type of uh, situation where there's a disciplinary action on a student. So I think as kids are, are they're sick, I think there's going to be a way for kids to still continue and get connected uh, a lot easier in the future for when you have those instances of yeah. you just can't be there. It, it, For some it, reason. In a weird way, it's it has something in common, it seems to me, like with almost homeschooling. And the fact when that really became more popular, which is what, a decade and a half ago, it really started to take on a, a, a real different world. We wondered how would that work. And now it's organized. They have extracurricular things. Uh, for the people who choose to go that route, uh, they they're seem to be getting a good education, and we've had to learn how to do that as well. But a decade and a half ago, it seemed like that's going to be awkward, right? Yeah, I, I think so. And I, I think another shift we're going to see, and I don't, I don't know to what level, and I think this will advance it some. And we, we go through uh, our elementary all the way through third grade. We have what's called a standards-based report card. So rather than, you know, math and English and science getting an A or B, they will have a, a reading standards that if they mastered it, they're like either mastered it or progressing or, or not mastered it. 
So it's, it's really focused more on the learning than it is focused on the grade. And I think you're going to, I think we're going to start seeing an extension of that because here, you know, really the learning can occur inside, inside the classroom, right. outside the classroom, online, and it's going to be moving more toward the learning. So I think over the years ahead, we're going to start seeing a lot more focus on like standards based, uh, reporting and assessment rather than, than grades. So I think that's some, a, a trend that I would see over the next next decade, especially due to this. And big so, picture learning is what it's all about, right? That's You're right. That's that's what it is. Yeah. So 